Now today we're working on a 2005 Sienna van, front wheel drive, V6 3.3 3MZ FE. First we're going to do is we're going to remove the negative battery post. We'll raise the vehicle in order to access our drain and while we're in the process we'll go ahead and remove the pasture wheel. That'll give us access to the two bolts and then we can get actually get to the pulley. Now while we got it lifted, we're going to go ahead and drain our coolant. Now while the coolant's draining, we can go ahead and start back up at the top and start disassembling. Now I'll remove this bolt and I'll just loosen this bolt and leave the bracket hanging. Now I'll go ahead and re-thread this one and just let it stay in there. That way I don't have to hunt it. Now we can remove this bolt, these two bolts, and the one on the back side, and simply slide our bracket out, being sure to keep up with these two isolators. Now if you notice in this video that I always put everything together, that way I don't have to figure out what goes where. Now we'll just simply loosen this up enough, that way we can take and just push this bracket out of the way. A lot of times that bolt will not come all the way out due to the cow. Now our ground strap and our noise filter. Now again, I'll go ahead and put the bolts back into the threaded holes, that way I don't lose them. Makes it easier to reassemble. Now this upper bolt, we're just going to loosen it up and then we're going to go ahead and remove the lower bolt. That way we can remove this whole bracket off as one piece. We don't have to decide which direction that bracket goes in and we'll put our bolt back beside the bracket. Now here on our inside alternator bolt, we're just loosening it up just enough to get this bracket off. You don't want to take it all the way out. Now we will re completely remove this 12 millimeter nut and if you look here you'll take and slide that out and it has a cut out so it'll pull right out. And like the rest of it we'll keep them both pieces together. Now we can loosen our outer 12 just a few threads just enough to get the alternator wheel to move. Then we can take and get on top of this 12 long bolt and if you watch it'll loosen up our drive belt. Now if I'm going to reuse the old drive belt, I'll mark the outside edge. That way I can put it back on the way it come off. That'll cut back on chirping noises. Now to our harness connectors. Now if you look here, you just push this back just a little piece and slide that up. We're not trying to move it a long distance. We just want it up off our backing plate. Now if you lift it too high, you run the risk of pulling the wire off of your power steering pump. Now we can move on to our cover shoulder bolts. We're going to remove just the upper five bolts. Now we can move down to our power steering pump and we're going to loosen both of these bolts up and just pull firmly on our drive belt. Now we're not going to pull the drive belt yet. We're going to pull our Harmonic balancer, bolt, get two firm grips, get your thumb in the center and pull straight out and uh, pull the drive belt off all as one piece. Now we can take the upper bolt completely out because we want that bracket to just lay there and then I'll go ahead and reinstall that bolt. Now we can move on to our lower cover bolts. If you'll notice, the lower cover overlaps the upper cover so you have to remove the lower cover first. Now here's an illustration of the four cover bolts you got to remove you'll see one's recessed just a little. Now I'll take this timing belt guide and place it inside the lower timing cover. Now we'll move back up to the top and work the upper cover out. Now here's an illustration of what our upper cover what our timing mark should be close to. Now we don't have to be dead on it we're just looking to get them close to it because that's where our cam roll is and it's less apt to want to roll 
once you get it near those marks. Now here I'm going to temporarily reinstall my crank and I'm going to roll the engine back if you'll look. And I'm watching the cams and I'm going to get my marks as close as I can. They don't have to be dead on. There's a hole we're going to install our pin. Now unless you have a problem with your timing belt tensioner, it's a big deal to remove these two bolts and pull this tensioner out. Now this shaft has a hole in it as well where the pin will go through. Here I'm taking a pry bar and wedging it between our bracket and our pulley of our timing belt tensioner. And I'm taking my time. If you'll notice how slow it's moving down, then I'll start trying to line my pin up while I'm holding it down. And I'll keep pulling it down until the pin goes all the way through to the other side. If you'll notice it'll lock in and it won't move. And that's got our tensioner locked. Now we can go on to remove our bracket. We'll remove the 112 nut and the 12 bolt and leave the lower bolt in. Now we'll move back to the top and remove our final 12 bolt. We can pull our bracket while our bolt is still installed. It's bolted a little too long to pull out. Now we can move on to our idler that's in between the two cams. That's a number 14 bolt. Now we got to be cautious on some of these idlers. There's a metal cover for the seal on the back side that may fall off. Now we'll get rid of our old timing belt. Earlier in the video when I reinstalled the crank pulley, that's what I was doing, was lining these two marks up. You want them as close as possible, that way it has less chance for the cam to roll. Now we can remove our cam bolt. You'll need to use a holder because you don't want the cam to be forced turned. Now if it does fall off a lobe, it's not going to hurt anything, but you don't want to force it to turn when it don't want to turn. You have a chance of bending a valve. Now if it does fall off the cam lobe, don't worry about it at this time. We'll fix that when we go to and reinstall our cam gear. Now we can finish removing the bolt and slide the cam gear off the cam. Now to our four bolts on our back cover. Because all we're going to do is pull our backing plate forward. Now we'll need to remove our pulley mount and our pulley so we can clean it up. If you'll notice it's got a lot of grit and grime on it. It's part of the belt deterioration. Now you got to be cautious on the back of this tensioner. There's a spacer and the only way to get that spacer is to order it separately if you leave it off or lose it. Now I'm going to remove my three number 12 water pump nuts. Now we can remove two of the three water pump bolts and we're going to leave our upper one just loose. This will give us some control on where the coolant flow is once we break the water pump loose. Now I'll take and pull the back plate forward and take my pry bar and get behind the water pump on the back side of the backing plate. After the coolant flow slows down, then we can remove our last bolt. Now we can take an inverted torch, remove our lower stud. On some models this pump will not pull out because it hits the inside of the fender. Some models it will, so you'll just have to check and see. We'll just keep our stud in place and pull the stud and the water pump out all in one piece. Now we'll take a wire brush and clean our block up, get any excess gasket off. Now in some cases you may have to remo remove this portion of your backing plate, but it won't hurt anything to pull your water pump out. Now we can install our new gasket and our water pump. Now we can reinstall our stud. Once you fill this stud bottom out, then turn it about a quarter inch further. Our three nuts, our three bolts, and torque them to 71 inch pounds. You see my torque meter there, don't you? Now we can reinstall these number 10 backing plate bolts, and we're going to use old torqueometer and hit them at 76 inch pounds. Now if you don't trust your torqueometer, you can always go down to your nearest auto parts and rent one. Now while we're in there, we'll just go ahead and blow out all the crap that's left in there, and we're ready to go. Now just because we didn't remove these two, don't mean they don't need a little bit of attention to, so throw a little torque on them before you close everything up. Now we can do a final cleanup before we start our reassembly. Install our cam gear. And now if it did fall off the lobe here, we'll take our cam holder tool and move it back and line our positions back up in the direction closest to our timing marks. 
Now we can take a wire brush and clean up this time and belt tensioner pulley. You don't want to use sandpaper if you can keep from it. The bolt that holds our time and belt tensioner bracket. Don't forget your spacer. We're going to have time to install our time and belt. If you'll notice, our arrows are pointing outward away from the engine. Now we're going to take our dotted line and line it up with the little dimple on the crank gear. Now if you'll see here, the one closest to your radiator, the yellow line is right on top of the cam gear. Now the cam on the other side, if you'll notice, the yellow line actually sits down inside the cam gear. Now I'm going to take and pull the tension tight on the water pump side and you'll see they'll get close to lined up, but they don't have to be lined up. If you've got your marks on the gears right, you're in time. We want the most amount of slack in the center so that when we reinstall our idler pulley, we won't have much issue with doing that. Now let's go ahead and clean up our idler pulley and get it ready to install. We want to be sure and install this by hand. It is super easy to cross thread. And we're going to forget our special service tools I got from Office Max. Now we can pull our pin to our timer belt tensioner. Now to our engine mount bracket. Don't forget to leave your bolt inside the bracket when you're reinstalling it. And once we get our studs lined up, we can take this upper bolt and push it between the two AC lines. You may have to lift the AC line just a little but you won't hurt anything. We're just gonna snug both bolts up for now. Now we can reinstall our upper timing cover. We're just gonna get it ready, but we're not gonna put any bolts in it. We're just gonna put it in place and we can move down to the lower. Don't forget your lower belt drive ring. Now this is beveled. If you'll notice outside edge, you want it to be the bevel in. And this is to keep your drive belt or your uh, timing belt from walking off. But it also, if you don't install it, your crank pulley will be too far in and it'll misalign with all your other pulleys as well. Now we can install our lower cover and the four shoulder bolts torqued at 75 inch pounds. We'll tighten our nut and our bolt on our engine bracket at 21 foot pounds. Now I'm going to take a pry bar and push our power steering pump bracket up. That way I can install our adjustment bracket. We're just going to leave the bracket loose, install our belt and our crank pulley at the same time, and line our keyway. Now you should be able to just take your hand and push that in, and then we'll install our bolt. We'll install it by hand and torque it to 162 foot-pounds. Now we'll take our pry bar and get on the washer of the bolt, and we're going to pull, we're going to tighten the tension up to where the washer actually lined up with the bracket previously. These are torque at 32 foot-pounds. Now this takes care of the bottom portion for now. We'll move back up to the top. Now we can go ahead and install our shoulder bolts, our five shoulder bolts for the upper cover, and we'll torque them at 75 inch-pounds. Now let's get our alternator drive belt installed. Don't forget to put your mark on the outside on your old drive belt. Now I'll tighten it up to where the previous marks is on the washer and go just a little past that point. That over tightening this alternator belt will cause damage to your crank main bearings. We'll tighten this bolt at 13 foot pounds. Now we can install this brace and get our remaining 12 millimeter nut. Now we can torque this nut and this bolt at 21 foot pounds. Now back to our alternator, we're going to torque this bolt at 43 foot pounds. Now moving on to our upper engine mount bracket. Now because I left this bracket installed, all we got to do is start our lower bolt. Remember we left these two bolts partially installed so we could find them easy later. So now we're fixing to install our noise counselor and our ground strap. And we'll install them at 74 inch pounds. Now up to now we've left all our engine mount bolts loose. Now we're going to install our upper bracket. Don't forget your isolators. Now we can hand start these bolts. That is the 
Now this boat is longer than the shortest boat and shorter than the longer boats. Now we're going to tighten these at 47 foot pounds in several passes. And don't forget this boat here, 47 foot pounds as well. Or you'll get a strange bumping sound in your dash. Now to our 14 millimeter bracket bolts. They'll get torqued at 17 foot pounds. Now we can install our hoses into their brackets. Now to our harness, put it back in its brackets. Don't forget the ones in the front. Now to our lower bracket, these are 47 foot pounds as well. Now to our battery cable and start adding coolant. Now while the engine's running and bleeding all the air out, we'll go ahead and put our cover on our harmonic bouncer and then put our wheel back on. Thank you for watching. I hope it got you some benefit. If you can, hit the like and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.